building costs going through the roof thanks to the perfect storm of demand inflation and, of course, the pandemic supply issues. CoreLogic's latest data released this morning shows costs have risen 6.1%, the biggest jump in four years. I'm actually surprised to hear it's not more than that, just anecdotally what you hear from people. Joining me now is registered Master Builders CEO David Kelly. David, what do you make of those numbers? I, I actually thought it was on the lower side of what I was expecting. Yeah, good morning, Ryan. Um, in terms of if you look at uh, building products, then you would say it's on the low side. Building products have gone crazy, uh, particularly in the last 12 months, and without doubt the area that worries residential builders the most. Um, uh, I think some of the other costs haven't gone up as much, but uh, I think there's still quite a bit of upward pressure on building costs. You, you're quite right. How much extra would it cost you to build a house today than, say, a year ago? Do you do you know a roughly uh, a number? Uh, it's, a di it's a difficult one to say. Um, so uh, discussion I had with a, a volume builder recently talked about what, what's happening with their clients, for instance, where some of them are managing their costs by reducing the size of the house, but they still want the same features in the house. So things like kitchens and bathrooms, which are expensive parts of the home, they still want, so the per square metre rate's gone up quite a bit more. Um, the overall cost, it's difficult because people are adjusting their expectations. But I would say it's north of that that 6.1% that you said. I would say it's it's closer to 10% plus. Wow. So you're saying because of the pandemic, we could all end up with smaller houses? Uh, well, some people are making that decision, and that may not be a bad thing. Um I think one of the key things is that it's designed well as well, of course, built well. Um, so thinking about how you use space uh, rather than just having a big home per se. Um, so I think people are adjusting according to what they can do. It's really interesting. What about the workforce issue? Because, you know, obviously builders themselves are in short yep. supply, have been for some time now, and we have this Omicron threat plus the restrictions where you have to stay in, stay at home if you're a close contact, all that kind of stuff. Are you guys prepared for what could be to come? I think there's, there's, so there's quite a lot of work going on. Um, and I know individual businesses, large and small, are thinking about, well, what would I do in that situation? I think when you think about the whole thing, Ryan, I think about what can we control and what can we not control, whether it's products or people. We can't control the international supply chain. We're a, we're a small market, a long way from the big northern markets. But what we can do, and this does come to issues around labour um, availability, is uh, control what happens locally. The government, with the Omicron settings, has talked about uh, um, critical workers. We're yet to hear the detail on what that means for construction, but I think it's really important that some parts of the industry, maybe not every job, is regarded as critical. For instance... Uh, those parts that distribute product around the country. What we saw last year with the Auckland shutdown essentially for almost three months and mm. four is that um, the whole country was impacted by the fact that there were a whole lot of products that could not be first manufactured and processed and then distributed. So, you know, we would say, and I know a number of other people in the industry are saying, you know, we really need to focus on what are those critical parts of the system where people are regarded as critical workers. And the, the importance of that is it means that they can go back after a rapid antigen test, exactly. not have the full stand down. Yes, so that's a critical thing that we're looking at right now. You're absolutely right. It's the return to work thing, right? It gives you the, yeah. the ability to be able to test in the morning and go to work that day if you, if you return yeah. a negative test. The problem, of course, the government's got is they don't have enough of these tests to allow that for everybody. So they are, and the Prime Minister said to this programme yesterday, going to tell us finally this week whether yeah. b businesses like, you, you know, industries like yours will be included or not. But you make a good argument. I mean, a roof over your head is quite an essential thing. And you guys uh, and your industry and those that service it are quite instrumental in making that happen. Well, I think that's right. It's, uh, you know, we would certainly argue that um, housing is critical infrastructure. Um, and, you know, politically over a period of time, it seems that, that there's more money in uh, building roads than making sure we have enough houses. The other thing, though, Ryan, and this is part of the problem worldwide, is that housing and construction is such a big part of many, many economies, including New Zealand. It's around third or fourth biggest part of our economy and the same for employment. So 
if if we have um, a, a sudden spike and we have a lot of people out of work and and a lot of um, building stops, that hits our economy really quickly. So we need to balance up all those things. David, for those who are sitting at home this morning eating their cereal, listening to you, and they're deciding, should I renovate my house this year? Should I build and you think about building a new house? Given the, the constraints on supply, the potential effect of Omicron on the labour market, what would you yeah. tell them? Come back later or what? So, so I'd do the same thing. You know, what can you control? What can't you control? Um, prices go up. They often don't come down. So if people are waiting for it'll be cheaper sometime in the future, unlikely to happen. What I would say is think about this as your time to plan um, and start talking to your architect or designer and your builder and understand what's going on and understand the timeframes. Uh, there are, um, you know, it is unnerving the price increases and the delays. Uh, but if you start to talk to uh, the professionals, and because I represent builders, I'll talk about that, they can explain the process. Now, there are some parts of the build they might say, look, depending on when you want to get an indication of price, um, the closer you are to the build, the more firm I can give you. Uh, what it's going to be, and particularly the first elements of the price, like foundations and so on. So break it down into manageable chunks and talk about the overall estimate of cost and then think, okay, well, what can I afford? Um, you know, what size do I want? Where do I want to build? So so do the planning. Don't, don't wait because there is still a lot of demand for housing in New Zealand, and if you leave it, um, then you'll find other people in the queue. Yeah, and it's only, and it's only, it's only going to get more expensive as well, isn't it? Um, David, we have to leave it there, I'm afraid. Thank you very much for your time this morning. Appreciate it. David Kelly, Registered Master Builders CEO.